I'm Mitch with IGN News, and Star Wars Episode 9 has a director. The film will be directed by Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow. This is something that, that binds us together, and, and I think it's the right time for Star Wars to come back. Will, will the ninth episode kind of wrap up that trilogy, or will it lead us into... Yes, the ninth episode will, will wrap okay. up that trilogy. You know, I have to practice how to answer these questions. Uh, what, I, what I do know is, is that uh, we're going to, to make sure that that answer is, is deeply and profoundly satisfying. Will the director of Star Wars Episode Nine get fired because of a movie he just did? That is a question people on Twitter are positing. Colin Trevorrow is no longer directing Star Wars Episode Nine. Lucasfilm said Tuesday, and The Hollywood Reporter is wondering if his exit could change the franchise's future. Star Wars Nine loses its director, oh my God! And a full breakdown of his unused Episode Nine script has allegedly leaked online. Turns out all that is legit. A fan tweeted at Trevorrow asking for confirmation, and Trevorrow replied saying, yes, this is from Duel of the Fates. Hello and welcome to Cancelled Movie Report, the documentary podcast series that talks about the best movies that Hollywood never made. My name is Michael Campbell, but just because we're friends, you can call me Cambo. And joining me, as always, is actor and comedian, Mr. Jedi Master. Eden Porter. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Kembo. This is the last movie we're covering for the second season of Cancelled Movie Report, and it's a biggie. Oh my god. We've been building up to something big yeah. all season long, <laughs> and we're finally here. It's the battle of light versus dark. This is... That's why we've got the uh, the white and black yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, true, we're wearing contrasting <laughs> colours, yeah. Uh, well, this is kind of a unique situation for us, because... This is a movie that like it's like a it's like a parallel universe yeah. where we kind of have the ninth episode and this is just a completely different ninth episode of Star yep. Wars. We're talking about Star Wars Jewel of the Fates. Yes, we are, Cambo. This is does this mean we're in the uh <laughs> in a timeline that is probably slightly worse off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, we, again, we've been trying to take as many requests as we can this season, and this one is no exception. This one was requested by Daniel Formosa off Instagram. He wanted us to cover this movie. So, Daniel, we're doing this just for you. No one else listen. This is this is the thing. Uh, I've seen reactions to this movie online already. In, in our niche community of people that are interested in cancelled movies, this was like huge news, and it's so huge. recent. Probably the most recent movie we've done. Yeah, it's, it and seems like it's only just... We've had tidbits coming out, yeah. but they've just pulled the trigger, and now everyone has, has seen this now. Yeah, the, the, the script is leaked. All the, There's like 40, 50 bits of concept art that have leaked. It's insane. And he's come out and said, yep, yeah, that's it's real. Yeah, yeah, that's it's all real. Yeah, that's it. And this is, this is what I want to clear up once and for all, because if you were to listen to the internet, this is both a masterpiece that was never made and way worse than The Force, <laughs> uh, than The, uh, the Rise, Rise of Skywalker. Skywalker. <laughs> and I think definitively we'll be able to put it to rest. We're both big Star Wars fans. Correct. So this is a big one for I us. Know. So without any further ado... Let's get into it. Cambo, I want to take you back to the year 2012. All right, let me go back. You know, I remember it. The Wayback Machine. Yeah. This, of course, was the year that Lucasfilm was sold to Disney. And I remember feeling at the time, I was filled with so much hope. Yeah. Yeah? I was like, wow, they're actually going to make these new Star Wars films. It's actually happening. It's Disney. This is this is going to take us to a whole new level of awesomeness. I remember the announcement because it was like, bang, bang, bang. They're like, we brought Lucasfilm. We're making a new Star Wars. The uh, original cast is back too. It was just mind-blowing. Yeah. I had waited my whole life to see like old... Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Because I'm a big fan of the extended universe uh -huh. and I love all the extended universe and I've read all that stuff and that's 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 yeah. my bread and butter So there. you were happy when they're like, all that is null and void. I was going to say, Cambo, <laughs> the, the first warning signs came when they said, oh yeah, by the way, you love the extended universe. Oh, that's not canon anymore. <laughs> oh, we've changed all that. I was like, okay, I'm a little yeah. worried at that point, but still I was like, no, this is, let's just see what they can do. And then of course- Force Awakens came out. Mm -hmm. JJ Abrams directed it. Yep. Um, there were things that I liked about it. There were things that I didn't like about it, but ultimately a huge success. I think yep. the most important thing about The Force Awakens, one, I have a soft spot for it because I have a list of specific cinematic experiences that are like some of the best I've had, mm. like like in cinema experiences. And The Force Awakens is one of them, honestly. I remember seeing it opening night and it was honestly 
just an amazing cinematic like experience. And I remember thinking, well, that felt like Star Wars. Yeah, that was Star Wars. Yeah. That was Star Wars. And so we started at Star Wars mm-hmm. and then we slowly started to descend <laughs> the mountain yeah. towards uh, what was ultimately. So we had 2015 The Force Awakens. Then yep. we had 2017 The Last Jedi. Mm. Now. The Last Jedi yeah. is very divisive, yes. I would say. And I, I would suggest, let's touch on it briefly, Yeah, but it's been talked to death for yeah. years and I don't know if we're going to add anything particularly new. We're not, we're not going to tread that ground, but we will just say that... Ryan, divisive. Ryan Johnson put a script together. You can say that, yeah. <laughs> and I think what he did was, so you're playing... <laughs> Let's say you're playing basketball with someone mm-hmm. and they get a knife and they stab <laughs> the basketball, it deflates, and then they go, there you go, try and play basketball now, mate. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't hate The Last Jedi. I also don't particularly like it that much. I kind of nothing it. I think there's a really great Star Wars film in there and all of the divisive stuff, the um, subverting of expectations yep. stuff, I actually quite like it all. Uh, Raise parents at no one, I'm fine with that. Snoke dying, I'm fine with. Like All of those things I'm actually fine with. It's actually the the bits that that irked me were the really goofy bits. Yeah, because it's a goofy film. Yeah, like uh, BB-8 driving an ATST, ATST walker like, oh, and yeah. the the casino plan and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that hurt, and I think what happened was I think that you mentioned those cool bits subverting expectations and stuff like that, but then. Where does that lead you? Because well, that yeah. is the biggest thing. Because you finish that film and you've literally got you've got no b- big bad protagonist anymore. Yep. You've killed them off. You've got you've killed off Luke as yep. well. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of it, and you've done all these things that yes, they subvert expectations, but it doesn't give you anywhere to go. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. Is that um, it, whether you like Last Jedi or not. And I, I completely understand people on both sides of the fence and I'm right there sitting on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't necessarily lean one way or the other on The Last Jedi. But you're right in that Ryan Johnson really made a difficult job for whoever followed him. Yes. And so that brings us perfectly um, to Colin Trevorrow. Yeah. He was given the top, the job of uh, directing the the ninth and final Star Wars Hot film. Hot off Jurassic World. Yes, exactly. So franchise director. He'd mm. done some some indie stuff before yeah, that. Yeah, Safety Not Guaranteed. guaranteed. Quite a good film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jurassic World, completely different. Huge, yeah. massive scale. So they, he sort of proved himself he can do things at a bigger scale. Uh, and he was given this opportunity. And so he had written his own script and mm-hmm. he put it together. And he's like, cool, this is... This is a great script. I'm really passionate about it. And he's a huge Star Wars fan as yeah. well. Um, and then he got access to, to to Ryan Johnson's script and he saw what was happening there. And that's when he started to voice his opinions uh-huh. a little bit. Um, he really there were, there were a couple of things that he really pushed out there. One, he really didn't want Luke to die. He had some great plans for Luke. Luke and Leia were going to um, sort of have their Force brother-sister moment and she was going to show all her Force powers and there was going to be this great sort of climax thing. Um, he had all these great ideas. He wanted Leia to be a big part of it and things like that. And obviously some things happened, like Carrie Fisher passed away. Yeah. Um, and then Captain Kennedy and uh, and Ryan said, no, Luke's 100% dead. He's not coming back. You've got to deal with it. So they threw him some curveballs. And yeah. you know what? To his credit, he said, you know what? Fine, I'll write, I'll, I'll redo my film, my original concept film, and I'm going to turn it into a something that can follow The Last Jedi. Yeah. And that's ultimately... Wouldn't, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, exactly. A sequel that followed The Last, Last Jedi. Jedi. Exactly. <laughs> and ultimately, that's he, when he put together his Jewel of the Fates. Yes, yeah. So, first of all, great name. Absolutely. <laughs> great name. Bang a name. And about just, just a thousand the, times better. For the one to two people listening to this that don't recognise the reference, obviously a reference to the song from The Phantom Menace. Just... Yeah. And I believe, yeah, he co-wrote this, if I remember correctly, with Derek Connolly. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So this was really, he'd, he'd taken everything on board. He was a bit of a yes man. He said, yep, that's fine. Yep. I'll, 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 I'll put everything together. Now, he he did write this one. Still, Kerry Fisher was sort of a, a quite a big role in it. Mm-hmm. And so obviously there were some things that they had to take into account there. But he really felt that he could just keep working on this script and he would get that opportunity. Um, and obviously we'll talk a little bit later about my, why maybe that fell apart. But cast is all the same. Yeah. Everyone's back. Um, everyone, no one's been recast or anything like that. That was the plan of attack. That's that's totally fine. So you got your Daisy Ridley's, you got Oscar Isaac's, your John Boyega. You got all, you got all, all of them. Um, obviously, there's no Richard E. Grant. <laughs> 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 Don't need Richard E. Grant. Um, and um, there was also a real a 
a more of a sense of what Colin wanted to achieve in this film. And I think for him, it was really the story of Ray and how she overcame things. Have you seen the theories that Ray is Obi-Wan's granddaughter? And do you have a response? I've seen all of the theories and, and um, you know, I have to practice how to answer these questions. Uh, what, I, what I do know is, is that uh, we're going to, to make sure that that answer is, is deeply and profoundly satisfying because uh, Ray is a character that uh, is, is important in this universe, uh, not just in the, in the context of The Force Awakens, but in, in the entire galaxy. Uh, and, and she deserves it. And so we'll make sure that that, uh, that that answer is something that feels like it was, it's something that happened a long time ago, uh, far away. We're just telling you what happened. <laughs> now, we now, we pulled that clip from Entertainment Tonight. Yeah, you can tell the banging beat. Well, I was going to say, I don't think we need to make that distinction. The aggressively loud background music <laughs> gave that away. <laughs> But okay, so he's all about Ray. All about Ray. Yeah. And that definitely does come through. And he's passionate about it. And so I think I think what he's managed to do is tell a, a story that really touches the heart of sort of Ray yeah. and that understanding of the Force itself. I'm so, excited. Because I'm it excited. feels like a new Star Wars movie. Yeah. And I'm excited for it. It's good. Okay, let's enough talking. Let's get down to it. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars, Episode 9, Jewel of the Fates. The iron grip of the First Order has spread to the farthest reaches of the galaxy. Only a few scattered planets remain unoccupied. Traitorous acts are punishable by death. Determined to suffocate a growing unrest, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren has silenced all communication between neighbouring systems. Led by General Leia Organa, the Resistance has planned a secret mission to prevent their annihilation and forge a path to freedom. We start with a rich tapestry of stars, as all Star as you Wars do. do, and then we drift back this time. There's not a ship going in, but we're drifting back into a glowing rectangular entrance of a docking bay. Okay, so we move back into a docking bay. Now the first order transport comes into view and it touches down. It opens out to reveal a variety of droids. A graphite black BB-8 unit carefully splits off from the ship. Yeah? It makes its way down corridors and bumps into a labor droid as it's moving past. It scrapes its spherical side, revealing orange. Oh, underneath. I knew it! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's good. He's undercover. Old, he's definitely good. Old mate BB-8. Old mate BB-8. It's, it's undercover BB-8. BB mate. <laughs> He rotates the orange to beneath his head and he keeps zooming off down the corridor. Classic. Now we cut to a small surveillance den where we see Rose. Obviously, Sorry, we what? We see Rose. Oh, this is different. Yeah, this, this is... is yeah, oh, yeah, good. <laughs> very good, very good. So Rose is in this film yeah. as opposed to Rise of Skywalker. Right off the bat. Yeah, I love it. They don't even hide her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's there. She's got lines as well. Um, so we cut to Rose. She's adventure-worn, battle-ready. She's got a comm link in her hand. She has BB-8. <laughs> BB-8 does his... He wobbles. He wobbles back. Do you know um, the voice of BB-8 from... Um, Bill Hader. Uh, Bill Hader was I first. Little yeah. facts. There we, of course you know that. <laughs> um, our viewers probably don't, though. Um, actually, they probably do. <laughs> Good. Star Wars fans aren't known for their lack of intensity. Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> she looks out the nearby window up into the sky to see a huge orbital ring with star destroyers sort of docked in all sides. So... Much like our Halo episode, we've, yeah. got a, we've got a ring in the sky. <laughs> I just want to point out at this point, there is concept art for a lot of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, all the way through. I encourage you to look at it. There's a link in the description here, and we've got all of the concept art that is for the first part of this episode in our blog. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, I will try and time it with this episode. Yeah. So you'll be able to see this as well. Because there's, there's, there's so much. There's so much. Like, it, it's amazing. It's so good. So she's looking up at this orbital ring with all these Star Destroyers, and it actually describes it in the script as... The orbital ring is huge. Star destroyers protrude from it like the sp- <laughs> like the spikes of a punk bracelet, <laughs> which is a weird way to describe star destroyers. But, but you can picture it, can't you? Yeah, very much so, perfectly. Yeah. Now BB-8 plugs into the nearest terminal and he starts working his magic. The screen in front of Rose then lights up, showing all the security checkpoint information. Uh, she looks through it and then she sees that an approaching drop ship is just about to come through. The dropship touches down to the security checkpoint. There are stormtroopers 
all around it. They're sort of watching the uh, the ship, it opens up, and all these migrant workers start pouring out of it. These bunch of workers all walk towards a weapon detection sort of centre. So they're walking there, and then we see one of their faces, and it's Finn. And we're like, oh, he's disguised in rags, sort of yeah. working among them. Um, they make their way to the scanner, and then Finn is shoved by a beast-like Devorian. Finn turns, he's saying oh, that... Hey. No trouble here. But he's instantly grabbed by the neck and sort of lifted up into the air by the Devorian. Then he starts yelling, Trouble! Trouble! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, A robed man steps between the two. It's Poe. He's uh, sort of, he's relaxed, sort of, you know, he's doing his hand solo thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, He pulls out a dried three-eyed peco fish and hands it to the Devorian in exchange for Finn's neck. Finn thanks him. <laughs> so a little little fun sort yeah. of introduction there. That's cool. Um, they then continue on towards the scanner, wondering if BB-8 has hacked the mainframe in time. Okay, but they're they're on an undercover mission, aren't they? This is so undercover. Yeah, you can't get more undercover than this. BB-8's painted black. These guys have their rags on. It's it's very undercover. What are they up to? <laughs> The boys then reach the front of the line and they step inside the weapon detection chamber. The power then shuts down momentarily and then starts back up. No alarm. They breathe a sigh of relief and they get hustled through. So they're through. They've made it through. And so Rose is controlling that power, I assume? Uh, Yeah, yeah. So she's clicked it over. BB-8's got the information to her and she's got them through. Um, They reach a vast migrant settlement and they see a a furry alien, Bis Kova. He gestures towards them to sort of follow him. In the shadows, in the background, we see a suspicious-looking Tuscan face. You know Tuscan Raiders? Tuscan so Raiders, ra- yeah. Wrapped all up in, in, in rags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're classic. They, they yeah. scare easily, yeah. but they'll be back in, in greater, greater numbers. numbers. <laughs> Always in greater numbers. At this point, there's only one of them, so we'll see, see where that goes. Um, we are now inside the migrant hunt with Biss and uh, his partner, Dal Kova. I love it how they just give everyone names yeah, and stuff just like that. Just I, I wonder if any of the new Star Wars writers have just used some of those Star Wars name generators. Oh, 100%. <laughs> because they name everyone and they're never in the film again. Yeah. And it's just so someone can write a yeah. Star Wars Wikipedia, Wikipedia entry that's just like, this character was actually da 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 But it's never any backstory for everyone. Then Rose emerges from behind a curtain in the uh, in the little hovel. The three in brace and she explains the situation. The orbital ring above them is a docking station and it gets its fuel from this large power shaft that's plugged directly into the moon's core. So it's sort of powering and and fueling up all the Star Destroyers at the top. The power shaft, it delivers raw ore to the uh, orbital ring and if they could detonate an explosive directly into the energy stream, then then what do you think that would do, Cambo? Kaboom. Chain reaction, yeah. right there, blows everything up. They could take down an entire that punk bracelet. Would go boom, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Become like an emo bracelet. <laughs> this whole star destroyer fleet would be destroyed. The trio make their way through the streets towards this massive power shaft. Yeah, um, it sort of reaches all the way up to the sky. They're sort of at the bottom of it now. They look up, but then in the background we see the Tuscan, the Tuscan, the old Tuscan Raider, just following them sort of oh, off in the side. We're like, okay. oh, who could this be? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think we know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Poe comms BB-8 to open the power shaft. Uh, the doors sort of slide open and they jump inside. It's actually quite easy to get inside once they've got BB-8 <laughs> on the inside. When they're at the door, they make short work of three mech troopers. Now, this is a trooper. It's like a stormtrooper, but it's like a robot, yeah, basically. Right. And they put them throughout the thing. I think they're easy to kill. They're not clones. <laughs> they're just like, whatever. So they're, they're sort of guarding the inside of the door. Um, once inside, they see a massive cylinder of sort of energy rushing towards the ceiling and up into the sky. Poe hands out thermal detonators. They all get one. Um, <laughs> they all click them. They throw them into the light force. It gets sucked all the way up. So they're like, great. Bombs away, Poe says, and they sort of leave. Our heroes, they exit through the main door, and then they find themselves face-to-face with a platoon of stormtroopers. Oh, oh boy. And they're like, oh, God, drop your weapons. (laughs) They really should say, you rebel scum. (laughs) They don't, but they definitely should in that case. Um, Poe looks up the sky, and he starts mouthing, three, two, one. What? He then dives and rolls on the ground, putting his hand sort of on his head. Nothing happens. Right? Oh, Nothing no. Nothing happens. We then cut to the orbital command center. Admiral Vaughn sees a uh, controlled blast on one of his monitors in front of him. Uh, the crew members then sort of all look around. Uh, one turns to him and says, uh, Admiral, uh, the blast shields have contained the explosion. All systems completely stable. So oh, they're onto they're, their games, they're onto mate. They're it. So we cut back to Poe on the ground. Any second now he keeps saying, then suddenly, a high-pitched wail cries out, and the hooded Tuscan raider steps forward. 
blades of blue light flash from both hands. It's a blue dual lightsaber. Oh, yeah, lovely. Um, I would just say, just insert crowd noise going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that, I reckon. I reckon that would people would pop yeah. for that. It'd be amazing because it, it was a speculation for a very long time. Because Ray always carried around her stuff. Stuff, yeah. Which and everyone's is very like, similar oh, that'll, to a, that'll definitely turn into stuff. a double sided lightsaber. That'll definitely turn yeah. into a double sided lightsaber, and it never did. It's a little thing called subverting expectations. <laughs> to see Cambo. <laughs> So now the Tusken Raider starts spinning around their dual lightsaber, takes down everything in its path until there's there's nothing left. The Tusken Raider's mask then falls to the ground, and who do you think it is? Ray. It's Ray. Yeah. That's right. She's now dressed all in black. She it describes her in the um in the script. She's not the girl we saw last. A grown woman, powerful, strong. Oh, and yeah. a lot of the concept art has her dressed. In all black, a bit very similar to Luke's outfit from Return, Return of the, the Jedi. Jedi. Yep. Little flap kind of yep. folded over with a little bit of grey in it. It's very obviously a homage. Can I, I say, of all the looks of Ray, the one that never happened, this one here from the concept art, mm. is my favourite. It looks cool. I love it so and much. And she looks like a badass. She really does. It's, it's actually awesome. Okay, so Ray's calm, dressed all in black, a bit like Return of the Jedi, yeah. double-sided <laughs> lightsaber. So cool. Now, Finn, he's shocked to see her. What are you doing here? She throws her arms around him. Um, they sort of hug. Mm-hmm. Um, the hug is quickly sort of broken as more stormtroopers start coming out. She then throws her double-bladed lightsaber like a boomerang <laughs> and it slices through all these approaching stormtroopers and then back to her. She looks at Finn. She goes, A simple thank you would do. <laughs> uh-huh. The new weapon that she's got in her hand, it's made from pieces of Anakin's broken lightsaber and her own bow staff. Ah. So she's sort of merged stuff yeah, together, yeah, stuff like that, together. Which is okay. cool. Which is really cool. Yeah. It notes that in the script. It's, it notes that it's really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it does say that. It says, uh, Campbell probably think this is sick. <laughs> Ray then force pushes back eight stormtroopers as they sort of make their way. So she's using all her tricks of the trade right now. Um, She pushes them all away. All these migrant children sort of start gathering around. They see her using the force and they all start chanting, Jedi, Jedi, (laughs) Jedi. (laughs) Uh, More stormtroopers start to arrive. Then locals start to sort of block their path because they're sort of helping Ray in this point. They're sort of standing in front of them. Then they start throwing their hammers, tools. You can sort of see there's seeds of a revolution sort of sort of there. In the confusion, we hear incoming TIE fighters approaching. Ray wants to help the locals. She sort of sees them over there struggling, but Poe knows this is not the time. She reluctantly follows him back to the blast doors, so they go back inside. We then cut to the comm centre. What's happening down there? Admiral Vaughn sort of looks at the monitor and sees... Oh, the last Jedi's with them, sir. The last Jedi's here. And then Admiral Vaughn sort of turns around. Alert the Knights of Ren. Oh, so it's pretty cool. Ow. Yeah. yeah. I wish it's he cool. said activate. Oh, yeah. Activate, activate the, Knights the Knights of Ren. Ren. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're back inside the blaster door. So we've got, uh, so Finn's there, Ray's there, Rose is there, and Poe's there. Um, they're sort of trapped inside. And Poe then sort of thinking, okay, what are we going to do? We need to go up, if yeah. anything. So then he com links BB-8. BB-8, we're coming up to you. Plan's gone sideways. We're going to need another ship. Poe looks up to the ring above. His eyes settle on the eclipse. A colossal Star Destroyer docked just above them. You're not serious. That is an Eclipse-class dreadnought. You can't fly. I can fly anything. We're in. Clinch. Everything. You're sure about this? Nope. We had better odds at Raxus Prime. That was not my fault. You need to let Raxus Prime go! Cut to the observation deck. Admiral Vaughn watches the rebels race towards the Star Destroyer. Where are they going? They disappear into the giant docking bay of the Star Destroyer. They can't possibly. How many men are on that ship? Just the bridge crew, sir. The rest are on top of Cut to Star Destroyer Bridge. Who's in charge here? Uh, uh, I am. Great. I'm your new pilot. Where, uh, where does the pilot sit? You will set a course for the Neroan system. We will set, set a course, course for the Neroan system. system. All the bridge crew take their positions at their consoles. Mind tricked on that. Come start the engines. We can jump right to hyperspace if we overheat the laser cannon drive. Exhaust will spill over. Into the propulsion systems, we can freeze the chamber. Don't you see? 
you and I, how we... Do you feel that? I don't the time. Okay, I'm going to need very specific instructions. Shields up. Setting calculations for light speed. Let's go! Don't rush me. I messed this up and we'll fly right into the sun. One of the crew members snaps out of the mind trick. Who the hell are you? Let's get somewhere else. Fast. Uh, I'm working on it. Who uses an inverted control yoke? The black empty part is where we should be pointed. I'm trying. Everything's backwards. Oh, I can fly anything. Okay, we're rolling now. Do we have the droids? Baby guys, no! BB-8 ejects himself out of the droid socket of his craft. He floats 50 feet through the cold emptiness of space and lands inside the hangar with a clack. We got him! Good for light speed! Okay, then now there's a lot going on there, <laughs> yeah. Cambo. Um, what a all, great fun scene, though. Mate. You, what does what Poe want? He wants to you know, your control yoke. Yeah, inverted control inverted yoke. <laughs> control yoke. There's so much fun there. So it, literally, it's it's a Star Destroyer heist. Yeah, this is this is what I really love in Star Wars is their action sequences are often peppered with fun character moments. Yeah, uh, and it's it's quite common. We don't really do a lot of action scene uh, recreations on this show. It's really hard. But Star Wars is great for it because they are so constantly talking. Throughout big action scenes. Like, yeah, yeah, don't get cocky. Like, yeah, yeah. everyone's always talking and doing things yeah, with like each other. Yeah, like, you think back to when you hope when they're escaping the Death Star, and she's like, they sent you to rescue me. He's like, oh, why don't you do it yourself, yeah, princess? Yeah, you know, Jenny, like, yeah, it's so good. Great. It's so good. Now, this um, Star Destroyer, this is uh, a Dreadnought class ship, so it's huge. It's called the Eclipse. Yeah. A cool name, blocks out the sun, yeah. it's that big. So, as the Eclipse, it blurs and vanishes into hyperspace. Another ship appears from hyperspace. So just as they leave, another one comes in. It's the Knife Nine, shaped yeah. like an arrowhead, and this is the this is the the Knights of Ren's ship. Yeah. It looks cool, but that is a crap name. The Knife Nine. The Knife Nine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Slave One. That's a sick name for a ship. <laughs> knife Nine. I think that's what they were going for. They're like everyone loves the Slave One and stuff like that. But then the Knife Nine. Yeah. Um, now, but this time, on the uh, orbital platform of the ship because it lands the actual the knights of ren they come out oh and we see them yeah and there's 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 four of them okay, okay? Yep. so we've got uh hataskar ren he's the leader with sort of a big black cape we've got ot ren and laurel ren yeah and then we've got uh jadek ren who wears sort of a ghost mask mm. on as well so kylo not the leader well, that's what it says in the yeah, script. Interesting. It's I don't know. Maybe he's the supreme leader now, so he's been um, right, promoted. Yeah, and like, then, guys, I don't have time to be running with you. Yeah, Haskatska, you and the new leader. Okay, <laughs> so you're doing that. So Admiral Von, uh, he comes out to sort of talk to them, but he's a bit scared because they're the Knights of Ren. Um, he Von. says that. Uh, so, so, so we uploaded a, a vial cipher to the droid. Uh, you'll have her location the, the moment the probe is in range. Sir. Now then. Um, Hatska Ren, he draws his dark saber. Oh, yeah, exactly. They just, they just pull that in, just the dark saber, and and he just instantly cuts Von down in a single blow. The knights turn and make their way back onto the knife nine, and they leave. Um, so now we cut to Coruscant. So it's during the day, and it's for. Obviously, everyone that's listening to this knows Coruscant, Coruscant yeah. is it's big, bustling city. It's like a planet that is a city. Yeah, it's basically the New York of the Star Wars yeah, universe. It really is. Yeah. Um, we follow a security craft as it descends down deep into the streets. It's going sort of, there's the nice sort of upper levels, and now it's going to the grimy sort of under levels. We then see uh, Dade. He's a 12 year old street kid. He's sort of just sort of hanging around outside. He sees a couple of stormtroopers roughing up some aliens. So he picks up a, brick of, a broken cement and he throws it at the stormtroopers' helmets. He then runs off down the alleyway, turns a few corners, and then we open up into Monument Square. It's a huge plaza with the First Order Capitol. So they've got this huge Capitol building in the middle that sort of looks out over this huge um, Monument Square. So this at this point, uh, Coruscant completely under... The first, the first order, order rule. rule. Yeah, so they've taken it as their home base. They've mm -hmm. got their capital there. Um, it's this huge towering structure. Thousands of people are gathered in this uh, sort of monument square and they're all sort of looking up. They're looking up at a giant four-story high hologram of now Chancellor Hux. Ooh, so he's promotion. been promoted again um, and he addresses the crowd. He tells them of conspiracy and treason as someone is dragged onto the raised dais. 
it's Biz Kova who helped the guys before. On the dais is a guillotine, but with a slight difference, Cambo. It has a hissing lightsaber blade <laughs> instead of a normal one. So we've got a, we've got a, a, a lightsaber, lightsaber guillotine, guillotine. <laughs> which is sick. It's one of those things where you hear that and you're like, oh, I was missing that. Yeah, I didn't I know I was. Yeah, I didn't know I was. But, but I want yeah, to see it that. now. It feels like home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so crazy. I like Chancellor Hux. Uh -huh. I like him being projected like Snoke was projected in the other ones, like really Oh, so he, oh, so he's a big projection. Yeah, the four-story oh, high projection. Yeah, 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 looking out above everyone. It's so big. I thought the projection was up four stories, but yeah, you're saying it's no, a no, no, four-story so, high, so high projection, projection of Hux. So it's yeah. that cool right. sort of, I, I think that's a really cool look. We then cut back to the Capitol Corridor where Hux, he's just delivered his big speech. He now turns around and it reveals a table of galactic warlords. He lets them know, yes, they lost the Star Destroyer, but their current transmission blockade has silenced millions of systems. So as far as he's concerned, things are still going well. They are concerned about Skywalker's apprentice though. Yeah, that sort of scares them. This last Jedi. And they keep referring to her as the last Jedi, which I think that's sort of cool mm. that they sort of bring that over from the thing. And so she's known in this world now as she's the last Jedi. Um, she's sort of this symbol of hope that needs to be destroyed. They ask about the whereabouts of Kylo Ren. Where is he? And Hux has said, look, he's on a secret mission. And he explains, look, don't worry about the Supreme Leader. He's off acquiring secret knowledge. Yeah. Um, and that as soon as he's found that, he's going to come back and he's going to take care of everything. And he goes, in the meantime, the girl, she won't be a problem because the Knights of Ren have been dispatched to eliminate her. Activated. Yeah. <laughs> Activate. <laughs> we then... So we've mentioned Kylo Ren, so of course now we cut to Kylo Ren. So we cut to a volcanic planet with obsidian-like mountain spikes sort of reaching out and sort of different. All of these, they go to so many planets in this film <laughs> and they're all, they're really scratching their heads for cool different planets. Well, this is Mustafar, right? Well, yeah, correct. Yeah. So you sort of get that sense, it's volcanic, it's sort of cool stuff and people have heard of Mustafa before. Yeah. It's where Vader lived. For it's, some reason. Yeah, for some reason he lived he got on a volcanic... burnt in, in, in vo a volcano and he's like, I guess I'll live here. And he wants to build a castle here. Yeah. So we're on Mustafa. There's the abandoned Vader's castle sort of in the background and we see Kylo sort of making his way towards it. A black drone sort of hovers behind Kylo. That's called uh, VX-20 if you want to know his entire backstory. I'm sure someone's <laughs> written it. On Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Kylo takes his saber out and he sort of enters the castle only to feel the presence of Luke Skywalker. Leave me alone. This is where the dark path leads. An empty tomb. And where did your path lead? You're a ghost. I know what you're searching for, Ben. Your master promised you strength, but you feel hollow. Soon I will be more powerful than any Jedi. Even you. Are you sure? Kylo swings his lightsaber to an empty space. Luke is gone. Go home, Ben. Go home to Leia. At the altar beyond, the artifact becomes defined. A Sith holocron. He channels the Force. Three sides of the pyramid slide away, revealing the energy within. It projects a hologram of Emperor Palpatine, recorded decades ago. Holocron's blue lights swirl. They change red and emit a laser that scans Kylo's body. Here the son of Skywalker will acquire a great ability. Beyond what you can hope to command in your damaged state. With it, he will harness the untapped power of Mortis. At last, we will we will realize. The blast of red lightning shoots from the holocron right into Kylo's eyes. 
Oh, 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 nearly. Okay, so Kylo found the Sith Wayfinder, mm. and he's now essentially going to finish what the Emperor had started many decades ago. Well, it's the it's the holocron. Yeah, it's the and it's the holocron. Actually, there's a lot of them around, and they all are cool, like Jedi and Sith artifacts, and they're in a lot of the extended universe stuff. And just to have it in here, it's really cool. You liking it? It's really yeah. cool. But Emperor Palpy. Good old palps. Uh, so he's told him, go to the Remnicor system, find yep. Tor Valum. Correct. He trained Palpatine. Yeah. Well, I thought I thought it was Darth Plagueis that trained Palpatine. Yeah. So Have you heard knows, the tragedy uh, of Darth Plagueis? Uh, it's not the story I, the Jedi would tell. Oh, yeah. okay. That's probably why I've never heard it. <laughs> I love it. What do you think of the idea that Luke is like haunting Kylo Ren? I love it. I, love I think it it's too. so good. I it's love just, it too. Because he says in he says in The Last Jedi, he goes, if you strike me down, I'll always yeah. be with you. And, and he I'll says, always... see you around, kid. Yeah. And then you'll notice in the films we got, no, he won't. Yeah, he never sees him again. <laughs> he never sees yeah, him that's again. that's so true, actually. So this makes a lot more sense. Also, it, it makes sense because as you said at the beginning of the episode, uh, he wanted Luke in the story. Massively. He's like, I love Luke Skywalker. I want to yeah. use Luke Skywalker. And now he's just like, you know what? He's around as a ghost. Yeah, he's a first ghost. And he's and it's not even like you have to be, oh, I'm in touch with the force and it's all Jedi. It's like, no, no, no. He'll he'll annoy Sith as yeah, well. He won't he won't go away. No, 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 no. <laughs> he's he's there for the long haul, yeah. which is awesome. But as soon as uh, Kylo gets hit in the face by the, all this force lighting, so mm. basically it scanned him, it realized it wasn't Vader, yeah. and it zapped Kaboom. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but then as that happens, we cut to a pair of blue eyes snapping open. It's Leia, and she cries out. Ben. Um, her hair's now long and grey, and she wears sort of white robes. So it's sort of it's sort of reminiscent to her from A New Hope, you know, mm. those those sort of oh, long white yeah, robes yeah, and okay, stuff. Yeah. It's sort of a similar yeah, nice. sort of vibe. And she then gets up, she stands at open window, so she's felt kylo's sort of pain yeah. in that sort of moment she's now on a secret resistant base in uh Kolarev. now this now this planet it's a rainforest but it's dusted with white snow okay so it's a it's rainforest, a rainforest with, with snow. snow so again they're really digging into that <laughs> sort of what other planet can we do um imagine the production design it would look cool it would look really really cool. just like how many planets oh my god oh god how many okay what it, it's it's a marshland that's on a skyscraper <laughs> In uh, a bubble. <laughs> and like, and great, everything's upside it. down. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, great. okay. <laughs> she looks up into the sky and she sees the Eclipse Star Destroyer descending to Planet Fall. Now, Leia's disappointed that they didn't take proper precautions and sweep the whole ship, look for tracking devices or anything like that. Like, it, She actually thinks it was pretty reckless of them to bring this huge Star Destroyer here because it could give away their entire location. She orders a whole planet evacuation of their secret base. Pose like, come on. Tell me you haven't always wanted one of these. <laughs> <laughs> but Leia just, she looks, she's obviously annoyed and she's always thinking about sort of the bigger picture stuff about how, trying to save everyone else. Mm-hmm. Then we hear Chewbacca yelling in the background and uh, he sort of is looking through a small porthole and he sort of gestures to the other guys to come over. They all sort of come over, they open a side door to this sort of secret compartment, I guess, in the Star Destroyer, and it opens up and it reveals a mile-long arsenal of Imperial weaponry. So we're talking ships, uh-huh. walkers, heavy artillery. Like every Poe runs over, he can't believe it. He goes, this is enough firepower to take out the entire First Order capital. Like, they could siege the capital with all this stuff. Poe pretends... Oh, that's actually my plan all along. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't the thermal detonators. I actually, this was the whole thing that we were actually going for, and it's pretty cool. But the only thing, they've got all the ships now, but they don't have an army, mm. you see? So they need an army. And the biggest thing is, to get an army, you need to tell people about it. And they can't, because no one can hear them, because of this transmission yeah, yeah, that's sort of there. Blocked. Yeah, exactly. But then we sort of zoom in on Ray. She goes, but what if, what if they could? Then Ray's back on board the Millennium Falcon and she's got the Jedi texts that she got from Luke, mm-hmm. um, from the, um, the Last Jedi. She reads them there and there's an old Jedi communication system that she's sort of reading about. It's powered by a nexus underneath the old Jedi temple on Coruscant. It's a force beacon that's underneath it and it's sort of engineered to call all these outlying systems so it can communicate. Um, if you could get to that tower, she says, then they could call everyone to sort of come mm. and fill up this armory. Yeah. And it could actually turn the tide of the war. Yeah, because you're saying that there is a feeling of people wanting to fight back. That's exactly. And so you've, and s- now, you've got little peppers of that yeah. throughout it. And so now it's like, well, hang on. If we can actually 
gather get everyone up. We've now got ships yeah. and walkers and crazy amounts of stuff that if we can get everyone to rise up, it's definitely worth a shot. Cool. So the idea being that if they could get to this um, beacon and turn it on, they could rally all the troops to it. Then we cut to Ray blindfolded. She's sort of doing her training. She's jumping, springing, ducking, all this. And then she hears Luke's voice encouraging her. Um, she gets hit in the head with a with a bit of wood. Um, and he says, Your pain is an illusion. She goes, It isn't actually. <laughs> and they have like a little... Like uh-huh. a, a little scene together where he's sort of—he's always helping. whacking her. He's always <laughs> whacking her with sticks and bang, bang. But then she suddenly stops. She senses a disturbance. We then cut to the first order capital landing pad. Yeah, a, a, a pair of the Organauts, you know those pig guys from yep. Empire. So they're pulling a stretcher of Kylo Ren. He's in bad shape. His damaged veins sort of stick out from his neck. They've got like burnt purple sort of scarring on it. They take him to a med bay and we hear his screams in the background as Mandalorian iron is smelted onto his face. Oh. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Um, then we cut back to Ray. She's holding her cheek like she could feel sort of his pain. They cut back to Kylo. Electricity flows through him. He's suddenly pulled into a vision. Two massive thrones built into the rock. A well of light. Himself and Ray facing off against each other. Lightsabers flying. He strikes her down. We cut back to Ray. She's having the same vision. She tears off her blindfold. What did you see? I saw a mountain. Two thrones in the rock. Kylo Ren was changed. You saw the future. Kylo saw it too. I could feel him like he was there with me. Where? Mortis. What do you know of Mortis? It's it's an ancient place. From a time before the Jedi. Before the Sith. Two thrones. Two powerful beings. One of darkness. The other of light. Together they brought balance. But it's a myth. So as I, if you remember. Beneath the Temple of Mortis lies a power beyond anything the Jedi have ever known. If Kylo reaches the temple, all we fought for will be lost. You have to confront him. You want me to kill Leia's son? The Force guides us toward balance. It doesn't always show us what we want to see. (laughs) Balance? Dark suffocates the light. Light extinguishes the dark over and over. How is that balance? I know that anger. I had it. My father had it too. So says my master, and his master before him. A thousand masters so eager to tell us how to live. I've spent my whole life wanting a family. Now I've got one. I won't abandon them. The Force is speaking to you, Ray. Maybe I'm not who it thinks I am. Who are you? I'm no one. If that's what you believe, the last Jedi is dead. Maybe he is. Ray's vision. Ooh. Okay, and again, he he's calling her the last Jedi. Yeah. I know. And then she, but she, she, this is interesting conundrum because she talks a lot about, well, it should be a bit of the dark and a bit of the light. And you tell me I can't love yeah. it. You can't me do this. And I'm, I'm conflicted and everything like well, that. Well, she says it there. She's like, well, balance. That's not balance. Yeah. Like they say one thing, they say the other, and it just keeps going around. Yeah. So it's an interesting, it's, we're starting to get a feeling of how they're like, we're starting to get a feeling of how they, are observing the force in this film. Yeah. And it's they're, they're digging a little bit more into some of the philosophies of it, which yeah. I think is, is And that maybe cool. the Jedi weren't exactly right. Well, I do think outside of the the first three original trilogy, they really shit on the Jedi <laughs> a lot. Like they do. Yeah. Like if you think about they make the Jedi look like arrogant fools in the in this in the, in the prequels. prequels. Yeah. Um and then in this one, like Luke is a hermit and yeah. all this sort of stuff. And so I'm like, can we just make Jedi cool and like <laughs> know everything, get Yoda back? Like it'd be so good. So we've had, so Ray's had her vision and yep. you can see they've got so, this connection. And Ray and uh, Kylo both had the same vision yes. sitting on two thrones in the rock. Yes. Of, in Mortis. In Mortis. Now, have you heard of Mortis before? Uh I have heard of it. It's in the Clone like, Wars. Like that name sounded familiar. Yeah. But yeah, you say it's in the Clone Wars. Yeah, it's, it's in the Clone Wars and it's 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 like a force. It's like a 
a force sensitive sort of world uh-huh. and it sort of comes to you and there's these there these beings that live there the embodiment of 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 like force like good and bad uh-huh. like the father and the son and it's it's quite a it it's very religious in its in its yeah. purpose and stuff like that, but it's it's very interesting. But they they don't really tap into that. It's more just the concept that there's something at this yeah. planet that can unleash the the inner force and you can take over the world. Yeah, it's thing. interesting. Like when when this was announced, the Disney acquisition in 2012, when they said, "Oh, we're sort of scrapping the extended universe," then every now and then we're like, "Oh, we need a planet. What do they got?" Yeah, yeah. Can we just <laughs> look that it up? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's that's out there. So. We've, we, we leave Ray mm-hmm. and now we're back with Kylo as they finish the medical procedure. Because remember, he's in pain yeah. and he's seen all these visions. Now, this is the classic image. Are they lowering a helmet again back onto his face? Very reminiscent of Vader. And they lock it in place. Um, we now see Hux in his chamber as he peers into a glass case. It's holding a lightsaber on a pedestal. Right? Ooh, yeah. This is Hux's own personal chamber. Mm-hmm. So he's obviously very... It, he's interested in the force and any artifacts that are sort of connected to it. Um, he has a collection of items along his wall and he looks at them with envy. He then places a coin on the countertop and he puts his hand to his head and he tries to move it. He tries to use the force basically. He's staring at it and he's going red in the face, but it doesn't move. He's out of breath and he's just been concentrating so hard. And then suddenly he's startled by Kylo who sort of comes in behind him. Um, he's wearing his new mask. Hux sort of looks at him and yeah. realizes, oh, we're taking it back. This is a bit full on. Because this is the first time they've met in this, because he's been off looking for his information. He's come back. He, Hux is clearly still scared of, of <laughs> Kylo. Um, Kylo explains that he's so close to finding the ultimate Sith power to control a force like never before. All he needs now is Hux to wipe out the resistance, and there'll be nothing to stop him. Um, and then Hux is like, I'm on it. That's fine. But then Kylo stops and he goes, "Leave the girl to me." So he wants he wants to right some wrongs. He's he's coming back with a vengeance. Because remember the last time they saw each other was in the the Snoke. Like they had they fought in the chamber. They and almost then, joined. They almost joined. Yeah. yeah. And then it was yeah. Then they they fight over so the much. lightsaber. Yeah. yeah. We cut back to the resistance base where we have Leia, Finn, Poe, Rose, all sort of having this big meeting about what they're going to do next. As you know. The First Order has silenced communication between all neighboring systems. The source of the blockade is a transmission jammer deep in the First Order capital on Coruscant. That's here. So far, we've been unable to find a weakness. No thermal exhaust port, no oscillator, nothing. In other words, they're onto us. Our forces are too depleted to mount a direct assault. But we found an alternative, an analog system from the days of the Old Republic. A small team will activate the beacon and summon the galaxy to war. When they succeed, the rest of us will be ready. I'll lead the team, General. (laughs) I'll lead the team, General. But I'll let him think he's doing it. Ray? They're looking for me. It's dangerous enough as it is. I... I can't go with you. Prepare to evacuate. We'll reconvene at the rendezvous point. Coruscant! Finally a good idea from those scrambled circuits of yours. Coruscant will be quite pleasant this time of year. <laughs> yes, a properly refined city will be welcome after hobbling down here like a gun dog. Hey, what was that about? I have to bring an end to all this. I have to confront him. Uh-huh, so you're just gonna confront him. Who who talks like that? Jedi do. I'm new to this. Okay, I'm going with you. No, I have to go alone. Where is this this confrontation going to happen? Is that in your book too? Mortis, in the unknown regions. Mortis is a myth. It isn't. I saw it. Oh, you saw it? Huh. And how do you plan on finding it? I'll... I'll figure it out. Hey, look, I know you think I'm wasted air on any mission, Master Jedi. Uh, Please b- stop but calling the thing me that. Is, I know someone who can find the system you're looking for. Give it to one of your flight academy friends, I swear. It's not one of those guys, okay? Because they're unreliable at best. Uh, but those guys are great. And I'm being nice. She's a navigator, lives on Bonadon, force sensitive, like you. Well, uh, not, not exactly like you. The spice diggers used to pay her to find deposits on asteroids. Do you trust her? Uh, she's a little off, but if this place exists, 
she can find it. Hey, I get it. No attachments, Jedi Path. I've read that story too, but... I'm just saying. You don't have to do this alone. So here's something that we haven't touched on yet, though it was hinted at in, in the beginning as well. Poe and Ray. Romantic flirty, tension. Flirty. Romantic tension. How do you feel about that? I, uh, like, uh, yeah, it seems forced. It seems yeah. weird. It seems like they, if you think back to the other two films, there's no hint of this at no. all. In fact, I didn't realize until the end of The Last Jedi, at the end of that movie, Poe introduces himself to uh, to Ray. In the very last scene, he's like, oh, hey, I'm Poe. I'm like, oh, yeah, they've never met. Oh, really? That's so crazy that they meet at the very, very end when she rescues them all. That's the first time they ever meet. Oh, that is, yeah. And see, even thinking about that, I just, it just seems a bit forced. Even, even when you think about what they were trying to do with Ray and Kylo, it's yeah, like, I like that. Is, they it, have is such a weird chemistry, weird chemistry relationship where you're like, and stuff. Why do I want to see them kiss? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. is that? And there's a bit of that there, and then then it's like, okay, well, Finn's not going to be with her, so we'll put Finn with Rose, and yeah, Rose is fine. Yeah. And then they sort of write her out of Rise of Skywalker, so there's nothing there. Yeah, and then they introduce like a new girl in Rise of Skywalker that Finn's again kind, kind of, of interested yeah, in. It's, so it's all over the place. Finn, and we'll talk we'll talk about it later, but Finn got a, very shafted he in did, the Rise yeah. of Skywalker, and they do. We'll get to this a bit later. Justice but, for Finn. Yeah, justice for Finn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now speaking of romantic tension mm-hmm. we now cut back to kylo ren holding darth vader's helmet oh yeah. sexy sexy so he's looking at that he's getting he's getting into the vibe he speaks to his grandfather you never he never met the man mm. but he's speaking to him through the helmet i understand you now your weakness your pain you will not love to cloud your judgment i will succeed where you failed he then takes the helmet out into his balcony and he drops it through all the clouds and it, we follow it all the way down and it shatters on the ground. Oh. Yeah. So he's he's saying basically Darth Vader, he opened himself up to love and that was his greatest weakness he and he totally failed yeah. at the end of the day. And so Kylo's now thinking of himself going above Vader. He then walks down to the gangplanks below and he gets uh, into his tie silencer, which we see in the, in the other ones, you know that? Yeah. Sort of pointy tie thing, yeah. Um, it's the uh, he gets his droid VX two O. That's VX two O. Yeah, that's just around that black droid that follows him around for whatever reason. And they set a course for Remnicor. Yeah. yeah. So that's where the emperor told him to go. That's what the emperor said. Get out there and go find um, what you need. Old to find Tor Valor. and get trained in the Sith powers. He goes, go go find my old master. Now we're back with Hux, and he watches Kylo's tire silencer fly off to the night. Hux is eager for Kylo and Rey to destroy each other. Let Kylo and the girl fulfill the empty promises of their ancient religion. In the end, they'll destroy each other, as Jedi and Sith always have. Then we will rise. A commander then enters the room and tells him that the droids have picked up the resistance signal. Ah, of course. So now they know where the resistance base is. Mm -hmm. Hux is excited to witness their extinction himself, and he readies his personal ship. Oh. Mm. Hux is in this a lot more. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> He's actually a good Weasley bad guy. Mm. The fact that he became a spy yeah. in the last one is so ridiculous. To the point where they had to cast Richard E. Grant to be like, we still need a Weasley bad, bad guy. guy. Yeah, exactly. And I think I actually like his sort of promotion here. Like he calls mm. himself Chancellor Hux yeah. and all this sort of stuff. Um and he's gone from just being that commander. He's sort of risen through the rank. I, I sort of like that. I think that's cool. Now we see we're back at the Resistance secret base, and we see Ray, Finn, Rose, and Poe. They're all going on their separate ways now. So they've got sort of clear yep. missions. So Ray and Poe, they're going to go to this navigator mm-hmm. to find a way to get to Mortis, and then she's going to embrace the Force and everything yep. like that, trying to beat um, Kylo there because they both have their same yeah. vision. So they, they know what they're going to do. Yeah, they're both heading there. Yep, yep, yep. And then we've got Finn and Rose, and they're going to go set the beacon on Coruscant. Mm-hmm. Now then Leia is also there, mm-hmm. and she tells Ray that she's different. And that she can bring balance to the force like no one else has, has in the past. It's this tender moment between the two, and she's sort of embracing Leia and, and Ray, and then bang, a huge explosion. That's what happens. Um, Hux's personal ship. Do you know what his personal ship is called? No. Okay, I'll tell you. It's called Finalizer. Oh! 
The finalizer. They do have, we've got like Eclipse, Finalizer, they've got all got cool names. The finalizer starts blasting down on the surface of the resistance base, so it's up in orbit, sort of shooting them all down. Decimate any ships leaving the planet. Charge the primary weapon. The evacuation sounds. Poe tells everyone, okay, let's actually get to the Eclipse, because the Eclipse is this huge dreadnought. If we can get everyone back into there, we can just get out of here. So they're, they're describing this in the script as all these uh, like bees flying back into the hive. So all these little rebel ships <laughs> right, are all yeah, sort of yeah. flying back into the hive and they're all getting in there. Um, and as they're flying, everyone's like, the Falcon's there um, uh, and it's called the Phantom Hawk. That's uh, Rose's ship right. that her and Finn are in. So they're all, they're all sort of flying out there. C-3PO is in um, Rose's ship and uh, in a little bit of a slight forced homage, he, uh, he says, I'm afraid our shields cannot withstand the super laser of this magnitude. <laughs> and then Rose cuts him off with, Tell me the odds, Trippio. I like numbers. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. you never tell. Subverting expectations. Exactly, exactly. Now, we cut back to the finalizer and its primary weapon is ready. They fire at the planet as both the Phantom Hawk and the Eclipse shoot off in hyperspace. So they're both out. The majority of people have all got out. Just as the finalizer super laser, it shoots into the earth, it penetrates the crust, and this huge sort of hellfire erupts around the planet. From this hellfire, we see the lone Millennium Falcon making its way. Now, it hasn't made the jump yet, but it's still sort of flying through. And what's cool about this sequence is because they've just blown up a huge part of the, the planet, huge chunks of scenery are now <laughs> out in space. So they're flying through space, but there's giant bits of jungle, there's mountains flying, there's a frozen waterfall that's because it's <laughs> gone to space, it's frozen, and that's sort of zooming past them. And then suddenly another ship starts firing on them. It's the Knife Nine. Still, still, Carl, the Knights of Renner Knights of Renner back. I still don't like that name. Um, they're starting to shoot at them now, so now we're getting a bit of a dogfight. And this is this is sort of our first real proper cool sort of fun dogfight. And they're both sort of weaving in and out, firing each other. Poe manages to blast a piece of passing mountain. So as they go into the because the mountain's rotating uh -huh. and it sort of goes above them and they shoot the So top it's of upside it. down above yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it flies off and that then lands on the knife nine and sort of spins them out into the in, like into the asteroid field. They're spinning out there, then they clear the debris and they push off into the space. We then see the Knights of Ren in their ship and it sort of steadies. Hadaska, um, then he puts his hand on the glass cabinet and then uh, Jadek Ren puts his hand on the uh, the cabinet as well and they sort of share a vision. And then um, Jadek then turns to the other guys and he says, Set a course for Bonadon. Now we're back with Kylo as he touches down in between these frozen trees. So we now realise that we're in the the, the Remicor fortress, right? So he's made it all the way over there, and he's look. This is basically an, a, a hidden ancient Sith planet, yeah. So he he's hoping to get trained. Yeah, he wants to be Tor yeah. Exactly. So and Tor Vellum is sort of played off as uh, the dark side's version of Yoda, sort of this <laughs> right. ancient seven thousand year old guy that sort of knows everything about the Sith. Um, Kylo walks inside the chamber of the fortress and he sees a glowing white light all the way down sort of the end and he sort of approaches it and then he hears a voice. Reveal yourself. I seek the Sith Master Torvalum. I am no master, but I was once called Torvalum. You trained Darth Plagueis? That name means nothing does your life? You threaten me with death. How amusing. You are weak. I feel nothing. You feel what I allow you to feel, child. Reveal yourself. to obtain the power of those who came before. Take your place amongst the gods of Mortis. I do. To rule the galaxy without armies, without starships. Yes. Yet you fear the frailty of your vessel. You need this power. Kneel before me. 
you call yourself a Sith, but the Sith, the unrepentant, remorseless. You're haunted by the past, your very existence. I have no regrets. You lie, unless you sever yourself from the past. Your fate will be the same as theirs. Taut Vellum motions to the battlefield in the valley below. We see vacant Jedi Knight armor, empty Sith Marauder armor from a battle long forgot. The living force is nourishment. The more one consumes, the stronger one becomes. To take life is to cheat death. Teach me. Look, he's not as fun as Yoda. No, he, and he doesn't have his cool backwards way of talking, yeah. but... But, like, what I love, when Yoda's first introduced into Empire, he's running around, he's bopping people on the head with a stick. Right, he's trying to grab a torch, he's, he's getting a little food, he's throwing his food away <laughs> and stuff like that. It's not quite the 900-year-old Jedi yeah. master. It's an old know. grumpy guy. And I've seen some concept art for Tor Vellum. And he's kind of like a weird blob. He's like thing. a blobby, sort of almost spidery guy. Yeah, and a little he's, spidery. Yeah. He's in this. He's in like a, a gross sort of pit area, yeah. and he sort of sort of comes out and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking. Yeah. Um. Pretty interesting. But big ups for a Darth Plagueis reference. <laughs> yeah. Like and and to be totally like. He doesn't. No respect for Dark Plagueis. No that respect. Means, that name means nothing to him. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> um, like, even he doesn't know the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, okay, so to make it clear, we've got uh, Tor Vallum's going to train Kylo. Yep. Finn and Rose are going to Coruscant, Coruscant to, to start the beacon. The beacon, yep. Ray and Poe are going to find the Navigator to find Mortis. Correct. They're all set for their Mate. adventures. Oh, exciting times. We've come to the end of part one of our cancelled movie report on Star Wars Episode 9, Jewel of the Fate. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we would love it if you would subscribe, be it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen. Honestly, it really does help us get discovered in the charts. It would also be terrific if you could leave us a five-star rating, or most importantly of all, tell a friend. If you thought this was kind of cool, we would love you to tell a friend. We are completely independent here at Cancelled Movie Report, so your support, honestly, it means the world to us. Hey, what do you think of the movie so far, and have we missed anything? We'd love to hear from you. You can always get in touch with us via cancelledmovies at gmail.com or at cancelledmovies on all of the socials. And hey, maybe there's another Cancel Movie project you'd love to hear about next season. Why not let us know? You can fill out a form in the episode description alerting us to a project and we may just give it the Cancelled Movie Report treatment, much like we've done with this movie. I'm Michael Campbell. I've hosted and edited this episode. Eden Porter was my co-host too, and we both produced the show. We would obviously love to thank our amazing voice cast. It's the biggest voice cast we've ever put together for a project. We've got them all listed in the description below. Make sure you check them out and let them know how much you love their work. Now make sure you're listening next week for the epic conclusion. It's an extra long episode just to wrap everything up. But if you can't wait, here's a small sneak peek. And, and I think Colin Trevor was going to tell that story at the end with the blue flag and the ATTs and they have them lined up in tribal marks and then the stormtroopers take off their helmets. Yeah, man, that would have been sick. But until then, take care. <laughs>